Welcome travelers. I'm Josh. I'm Glenn. And I'm Lee Wanika. And this is Tabletop Journeys, where we will be your not-so-humble guides on the quest for RPG adventures. Here at Tabletop Journeys, we are all devoted role players and storytellers at heart, and we absolutely love sharing our passion with you. On our show, we feature diverse tabletop RPG systems, demonstrating them through actual plays and breaking down the rules to provide you with tips, tools, and techniques to help you navigate them. We also love bringing the content creators behind these games into the studio to give you a peek behind the curtain with relevant and insightful interviews. Let us help you get the most out of your story, no matter what game world or system you're playing. Because detailed settings, heroic characters, diverse NPCs, and a focus on story over rules can make any campaign legendary. Now, here's a message from friends of the show. Hub Station Andromeda. Priority. SOS. Station under attack by CFM. 18 confirmed hostiles. 1 crew KIA. Hazardous materials on board. Surviving crew abandoning station. Data packet attached. RX acknowledge. 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 End transmission. Hi, we're Leyline Press, and we're proud to present Andromeda, a module for the Mothership sci-fi horror RPG. Available to back on Kickstarter now, it's printed in fluorescent green ink on embossed black paper. As it glows under UV light with a huge A3 map handout for your players, it's ideal for an atmospheric night of gaming. Find out more at leyline.press, or find us on Kickstarter by searching Andromeda for Mothership. You arrive at this area of the docks that was described to you by the young would-be witch, and sure enough, there is a small sailing ship with notably the pale blue sails furled up, but nonetheless hard to miss. Yes. So before we are in view of whoever is going on there, yeah. I want to try to figure out what we can see up there because I do have a cunning plan that may or may not be impacted by what we see up there. So I would like to be somewhat okay. sneaky. So yeah. if you would like to get a good view of what's going on up there way before anyone else so that you can maybe act early at the beginning of the dock or something, go ahead and give me detection to see if you get information early. Eh, I do not with my okay. natural one. I would also like to move stealthily because I would like to post up in this area here. <laughs> okay, so you want to be like at the, the rock wall at the edge? Yeah, um, but under some kind of cover so I'm not noticed. And I can yeah, certainly so, take a longer circuitous route. To kind yeah, of so like, as the, the group walks onto the dock, you're behind the captain. So if you want to quietly dip out from behind him without anyone noticing, give me a stealth check. <laughs> sure. Stealth is plus seven. I suck. That's an eight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Honestly, I probably should have given you advantage because you're you're behind the guy. No one's looking at you. Go ahead. The, these guys up here aren't expecting you. So you're, you're getting a sympathy roll. <laughs> I'll I will take the twenty five. <laughs> okay. Yes. As the others walk onto the dock, you dip out behind them and are hiding in between a market stall and a a rock wall of the docks here and the, the other uh, two of you and the captain marius Sorn, i have an idea i can change my appearance should i change it to look like our witch as you're suggesting that and walking out to the beginning of the dock the captain gestures forward and he says it appears that won't be necessary my friend look we uh, some of my men have beaten us here and indeed as you look ahead these four blue markers Number two it looks to be a mage of some sort, uh, a wizard like yourself, who is allied with the Inquisition. And then number three, four, and five are just more of the guardsmen. 
numbers one, two, and three are on the boat, and these are other young wizards. The young lady from before surrendered, not yet cuffed or anything, but surrendered. One of them looks to have been a bit beaten, look quite frightened and such. But yeah, that's the scene ahead of you. Two of the Inquisitors are on the boat. One of them is the mage. Two of them are just on the edge of the dock there, guarding the plank. Do you do anything further as you approach? Because otherwise he'll let you walk up with him. I will stay behind the group and consistently taking cover. So as they move up to a certain point, I will take the next cover position behind them. I would move a little faster so that I am uh, in front of our captain and Zorn. And as I approach, I would call to the wizard in ethereal or etheric. Yeah. Uh, Uh, A standard greeting. The Inquisition wizard, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Pretty standard for Inquisitors to be at least somewhat fluent in in the holy language. And what's up, my dog? He returns the the tail. How you doing? Um, Continuing in etheric, I would ask him how they got here so fast. He's like, well, we followed the zombies. <laughs> we think it was this one, and he gestures at the one who has been beaten a bit, a uh, black eye, a little bit of a bloody nose going. Mm-hmm. I want to make an intuition check and see... I want to get a reading on the three red tokens there. Because I would think that raising zombies takes some magic prowess to go ahead and do that. Yeah, and, and it's certainly forbidden. Right. So I want to see if... Uh, I don't know. Again, I just want to kind of get a read and see, do any of them seem to have the markings of a mage that could do that? That's a 24. That's pretty good. No, they're not putting out evil necromancer vibes, these folks. They remind you of the girl from earlier. Young adults, frightened, just want to get out of here. Look on their face. They really don't want to be here right now. Zorn doesn't think that this smells right, and he moves forward to stand slightly ahead and behind Galal and is 100% focused on not focusing on these people because he doesn't think that those three and these guards and every, all of this like lines up and he's trying to be alert for anything else going on in the vicinity. He smells a trap of some form. Okay. Would you like to make an intuition check as well, perhaps? More aimed at the Inquisitors since you seem suspicious of them. It was more a detection about everything sure. else or sure. trying See if to anyone's hype, hiding or anything. Yeah. Trying yeah. to hype up my passive. Right. You have a pretty high passive. Yeah. You don't even need to roll because your passive is so high. No, no one is hiding around you, or if they are, they're doing a damn good job of it. Okay. He lets everybody else continue talking while staying alert for anything about the situation changing. If no one interrupts, the captain walks up, just vaguely congratulates his men on a good job. And if uninterrupted, we'll move to have them handcuffed and arrested and taken away. One of the mages, not the one who was beaten, but the one closest to you, locks eyes with you and mouths, please help us. Yeah, something, this does not smell right. Okay, this other Inquisition mage, Galal is putting together a conspiracy theory here. (laughs) Do we all know each other? I know that the Inquisition is huge, but... The Inquisition is huge, and Imperia is the biggest city in the world. No, you don't know these guys. Sure, yeah, yeah. So you didn't see him at the Hyman Bar Mitzvah? Captain, I... Something doesn't seem right about this. I'm sorry, uh, Inquisitor, I, I didn't get your name. Where are you from? And he speaks with a a local accent. He says, my name is Caius. I'm from the countryside, just about here. And you look at him, he's probably 40-ish. He's, I've been mm-hmm. with the Inquisition a number of years. And who did you study with? Many teachers at the Arcanum. And indeed, that is how it works. They don't have just yeah, one yeah. teacher. Sure, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> and what is your specialty again? What was... I am I am a tracker. I l- locate other mages. Yes. Which is a thing. <laughs> and how was it that you were here at the docks to follow the zombies in the first place? On patrol. On patrol randomly at the ship that was not leaving. At, not at the ship, at the docks. Just why were you following zombies if... Zombies were in the town and not here. How, how did you know to come to the docks? How did you know who you we were looking for? We assumed that the zombies must come from a necromancer, so we followed their trail backwards, started the, checking the ships, thought perhaps someone had arrived by boat. Where are the zombies you tracked? I don't oh, see zombies. 
We uh, admit to my shame, we let them get away, but and he looks at your bloodied weapons and he seems you've taken care of that. Oh uh, no, that's a shaving accident. Try again. I, I want to evoke fear in him. <laughs> that would be pretty hostile. Yeah, it would be. Let me. Uh, so you want to use the subtle mod, but I, I, on another yeah. mage, he would probably know what you're doing. Uh, uh, let's see. Do I want to do this then? Hold on one sec. Noting Galal's change in tactics and that he's now uh, focusing in on this mage, even if it's still in a language that I don't understand. Uh, oh, I apologize. Uh, I, so, no, I thought I, that I, was common. I, 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 they, I they've, back to common. they've switched yeah, yeah. back to Iborian. Oh, okay. Common. Realizing that my compatriot, who, though I think he's a little bit ridiculous, I've come to trust to some degree, thinks that the authorities are the suspicious ones in the situation. Uh, Zorn shifts his focus to the mage he's talking to first, and then the other men around it and the captain for trying to figure out what's going on with them with intuition, if that is okay. Sure. 16. Okay. You're sensing, not so much from the mage who's, who's having this conversation, but from the other guards and from the captain, their fists are, are clenched around their spears. They seem angry. They seem uh, perhaps overzealous is the vibe you're getting, that maybe these folks don't deserve this level of punishment, and these guys are just grabbing wh whoever they think might be guilty, and they just want to get anyone they can vibe. And did you include the captain in that, or just the three of the cards? The captain as well. The captain is gruff and serious, more, but he it seems more like they're he mistaken. seems content to go along with this. Less that they're like in on it, but more like they're mistaken. They've got the wrong people. Probably. Okay. Have you checked the blow decks? The other guard who is on the ship pipes in. He says, "Yeah, just supplies for a journey. Nothing amiss that I could find, anyway." Inquisitor, so what is it about these three? Something's just... And apologies, I'm newer to the field than you are, surely, and so perhaps I am I'm asking you to impart some of the wisdom that you have gained in your many years in the field, but why these three? They don't seem to be capable of the type of magic that you're talking about. The mage becomes a, a bit cross with you, and he says, are you questioning my ability to detect and track down a witch. I am asking you to show me your ways and illustrate them to me. Zorn says, that's what I heard. If you wish to learn the spells, go back to the Arcanum. I, and, don't, and, wanna, I don't wanna learn the spells, but if you can track a witch based on what you see here, and they didn't do anything here, then I'd like to know that. What like, spell did you, you smell use? Them? Go ahead and answer the question. Do they smell different? They have it about them. Well, they had it sure. about them. They are students of the Arcano. Of course they have magic about them. Well, they aren't graduates, though. They shouldn't be out and about. That's uh, a, you know what? That's a fair question. And I will move past the guards, and I will step onto the boat, and I will go to the one who mouthed... Uh, that would be number three. Yeah, the sure. captain will join you on the boat, getting uh, a little tight-packed uh, so here. I'll go to number three and say, um, boy, what is your name? Marcus. Marcus, what were you doing out and about? Be honest, it's better for all of us. It's... We were trying to leave, yes, but none of us here even know how to make a zombie. Hmm. Please, you, you must help us. You're one of us, please. And, and as, as he says that, the, the, the mage Inquisitor who's, who's next to him just backhands him and says, Quiet. Inquisitor, who is it that we're really chasing here? Three upstart scrubs who will be put on kitchen duty for attempting to flee or one who is practicing the dark arts and resurrecting the dead what's as you're, really our what's really as you're, our target here yeah as you're continuing to try to weasel them out of this the captain uh turns to you and says my friend i think you've done quite enough here if you'll take your pay and be on your way i think that would be best for everyone uh, from where I'm at, are there any windows in the lower part of this boat that I can see inside? Can I see anything going on inside the boat? <clears throat> I'd walk the length of the dock, and, and I'm trying to eyeball anything to give me information. It, yeah. Go ahead and roll detection to spy through There's a couple of like cannon windows, essentially. That's but... a 25. Okay. You're quite sure that, that there's no one moving down there. It seems like it's just these people. Okay. 
Actually, I was going to ask a question. Mr. Inquisitor, not my friend and not the captain, but Inquisitor who The mage, like, yeah. Who, who Obinar doesn't really know easily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, lightly armored one, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Inquisitor Squishy weren't very kind to to smack a non-monster when they were bound or about to be bound. But we found the ones we were chasing all had invitations on them. Do these prisoners have invitations? We were about to conduct a search. Oh. We're interrupted. Oh, I apologize. Galal, can you check their pockets? And that way we don't have to bother Mr. Squishy person. If they don't have invitations, they're probably not the right people. Whoever has invitations must be the right people. And now I'm looking at the Inquisitor and his people to see if I see any kind of paperwork on them. Wait, all right. So (laughs) I think that they changed positions. Like, I think the actual people we're chasing are in the Inquisitor's outfits and okay. perpetrating a ruse. I don't know if I'm way off, Ooh. but that's what I'm thinking is happening. So whoever has the actual invitation is the actual bad guy we're chasing, is my thought. You suggest that they check the pockets of the would-be prisoners. But I want our people to do it so they don't try sure. to slide them some paperwork. Y- you guys pat, pat them down. And unfortunately, on one of them, you do find a slip of parchment. Number one, actually, the one who had okay. been a, a bit beaten. Yep. Perhaps coincidence, perhaps not. Unroll it. And yeah, it's a slip of paper that describes the meeting location and, and the time to do so, which would be about now, about midday as it is. And it's not signed with a to or from anyone. It's very to the point. Meet me here this time, this place. And if you want to share that with the group, you can. Yeah, I would say there does seem to be a letter here. Does it match the letter that we found on Valeria? She didn't actually have it, but oh, it, that's right. She told she us about didn't it. Didn't actually have it, but it sounds it. the same. It's consistent. Yeah, yeah. It has it has the salient points. Yeah. Yeah. So to the three prisoners, Zorn says, "Was there anyone else on this ship when you got here?" One of them looks up and says, "No, sir. No crew." No. No one to greet you? No. I knew I smelled a trap, and Zoran eyeballs the piece of paper they found in his pocket. That's the trap. It's a trap for them. Someone's feeding them these papers to get them to come down here so they can arrest them. As you say that, the captain draws but grabs the hilt of his sword and looks at you guys and says, You will take your pay. Be on your way. All right. I will evoke fear him. I will make him piss his pants. I'm going to turn to him and say, okay. uh, like, so I will evoke the magic to basically cause him to be frightened of me. And I will say, no, you will follow the tenets of the inquisition as they are said and stop what you are doing. So that is a charisma, charisma saving throw. All right. As a five. So uh, he is a feared. He is a feared. And you will keep your sword where it is. All right. Go ahead and uh, roll initiative. Uh, but yes, you, he is successfully frightened, which will make him a much less effective combatant. We've caught them at their uh, dirty work, and now they want to cover it up. Yep. Josh, go ahead. That's a seven for me. Nika? Eleven. And Glenn? Seventeen. Okay, let's check for ties. There's a lot of dudes. Lunika, you and a guard have tied, so... Okay. Roll plus luck. That's a five. Nineteen. All right. Promoted to eleven and a half. Excellent. You cast a spell. Everyone, the Inquisitors, look very upset with you. The sure. students, realizing that now perhaps they have a chance to escape or potential allies or what have you, um, will act. One of them actually got a twenty-one on initiative. Student number two is going to do a spell. We're going to keep it simple. He's just going to cast fire burst at the captain and he's gonna empower it just once so the captain makes a reflex save the captain does very bad Ooh, i rolled one shy maximum that is a hefty 15 fire damage to the captain so now he is a feared and a flamed and they're not gonna try to move other than standing up then uh, zorn is first amongst you so the captain is drawing weapons right yeah they've drawn weapons the mage has drawn a dagger or what have you but zorn says to the students You've gotten in enough trouble. Over the side with you. Get back to your dormitories. Tell everyone it's a trap. They get a note like that. And then he lays into the captain with his longswords. 
drawing them both simultaneously and yep, beginning his dam. So. 18 and 12 is 30. Uh, that's a hit, even with his very good armor. For 8 damage. Ouch. And he's Offhand human, weapon. so everything just works. Offhand sneaks in there, 25 to hit. And the third <laughs> attack, I rolled a 2 for a 14 again. Well, that's definitely a miss. Yeah, he's got chain and shield. Yeah, I didn't figure I was hero pointing my way up from where I am to him. So. No, that would be expensive. Yeah, so he gets blasted with fire, gets caught off guard, slice, but gets his shield in the way of your third attack. And since he's not a zombie, he says, you should have left me in the end to the <laughs> captain. Then it is wizard number one who is wounded. He's actually just going to disengage and head for the back corner of the ship. Gage is a full action, so he's done. I'm out of yeah, here. He, yeah, he's out of there. They already punched me in the face enough, I, and I'm right in melee with these guys, so I'm just going to stand over here. Yeah, if he can swim, he should jump and swim. But Zorn already gave them that advice. It's up to them whether or not they listen. Yeah. Actually, I've, um, got, I've got different advice for him, but I'll wait for my turn. Yeah. Then the next one is guardsman number four, who is going to run toward this guy who's been hanging out in the back, standing at the edge of the dock. What was it? A spear attack does hit. It's yep. just shy of a crit, but only four piercings. Two, two. again to you. And yeah, I'll just, do, I'll just do a second attack disadvantage. But yeah, that's a miss. Then it's your turn. Uh, he hit me for damage, so I'm actually going to do my retributive strike. All right, so that's a magic oh, save. Retribution. That's uh, definitely a failure. Because he's not a major or anything, so he's not good at those. I am actually going to spend two spell points to empower, uh, to empower it. All right, so that's three d12. Yep. Is 16 points of holy damage. Yep. And as he Which hits, is a lot. hits me with a spear, I, I turn, look at them, and I say simply, you'll unhand me. I declare thee a monster. <laughs> very good so that was just your reaction actually so now take yep. the rest of your turn since it happens to be right now spearing him twice sure that is 21 that's it and 21 again with this advantage okay yeah so give me damage on both yep eight and three is 11 on the first hit and four right. on the second hit okay could have been a kill but alas the D8s give it, and the D8s take it away. Yeah. Then guardsman number three is oh, going I'm to. Oh, I'm sorry. I am actually going to run. So five, ten, fifteen. He'll get an attack of opportunity. He'll get an attack of opportunity. Yes. Which I believe hits you for a dirty twenty. Yeah. Wow. Again, a one on the D6. So that's four piercing damage, which is two for you. Yep. Because rocks. Anyway, yes, and, then... And your retribution was last round, so you could use your reaction. You could retribute oh, immediately that's, again that's if you wanted. Right. He's uh, pretty beat up at this point, so maybe not yeah. worth an empower, but up to uh, you. I roll like shit. So, <laughs> with that as my given, let me first make see where my points are. Yeah, how are we doing on SP? I was at eight before that last one, and I used so a total of three, so that leaves me with five. Um... And we don't get spell points back on a short rest. So, yes, yeah. You, well, yes, you do. You get your you magic do. points back. E equal uh, to your magic score. So I got four back. So it was a. So that put me at max minus three. That leaves me at seven. So, yeah, I'm going to empower. All I'm right. only going to empower one this time. Okay. So magic saving throw for me. Yep. Yeah, that's a two, which is actually a zero. Uh, not, not great. It's uh, six points of. Holy hey, damage. that is how much health he had. <laughs> so. As he yeah. immolates, I said monsters will not touch me. Who's next? Welcome to the middle of the show. We wanted to take a minute and thank the people who helped make this show possible, our Patreon supporters. We like to shout out our adventurer-level Patreons, so extra big thanks to Tim Morris, Chad Bean, Joe Harney, Dave Rideout, Adam Scaramella, and Marty Napier. Patreon supporters get exclusive content, free copies of all of our published and unpublished game supplements, early access to episodes, and free invitations to our monthly games. You can learn more at www.patreon.com slash ttjourneys. 
Speaking of our published material, have you checked out all the supplements we have on DMs Guild? We have two full books there, The Traveler's Guide to Collaborative World Building and The Traveler's Guide to the Multiverse. And you can combine that with all of our other supplements to help you make your next role legendary. Go to www.ttjourneys.com forward slash DMs Guild for more information. If you're looking for Tabletop Journeys swag or need a fantastic set of new dice, you should check out Tabletop Journeys Spring Store and our affiliate FanRoll Dice. You can make your first purchase through FanRoll at 10% off, and every purchase there helps support the show. You can learn more about that at www.ttjourneys.com slash FanRoll. And if you want to get some awesome t-shirts, hoodies, hats, and other gear, check us out at www.ttjourneys.com slash swag. You'll get redirected to our spring store, and there you'll see all the cool designs and great things that we have to offer. These are the same vendors that we use for our add-ons when we do Kickstarters, and we stand behind their products. But the best way you can support the show is to join in the conversations we have all over the internet. Did you love one of the episodes? Did you disagree with something one of us said? Do you wish we would cover more of your favorite game system? We would love to hear it all. Check out our social media links at linktree slash ttjourneys. That's l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash ttjourneys. We can't wait for you to join the conversation. We hope you're enjoying this week's show. So here comes the second half. Don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening to it. And if your platform allows you to leave a comment or a rating, why not hit the button and show us some extra support? Thanks again for listening. Now on with the show. Very good. The guard number three, who is on the ship, just the regular guardsman, he's going to attempt to grab the wounded mage who tried to run away. He's going to run up to him and make a grab check. So they both roll athletics. Uh, yeah, he's been grabbed. He's grappled. That'll be their turn. And then the captain, who is frightened, he has disadvantage on any attacks while he can see the source of his fear, which is Galal. And he's right there, so he can see him. So he's going to make an attack at disadvantage against Zorn, who happens to be the closest. Two on the lower die, so that's a miss. And then second attack, also at disadvantage. Seven on the lower die. Is there a double disadvantage or anything like that? Because your second attack would already be at disadvantage. No, there's no stacking. Yeah. 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 No, no, no 3d20. But that's uh, a dirty 20, so that should be a hit, yeah. Indeed. For seven slashing damage. And then he's going to foolishly use some of his movement to try to back away because of the fear. I was wondering if you'd like to make a attack of opportunity. Of course I would. 20. Actually, 20 is his armor. So if you'd like to hit, you can spend that one hero point again. All right, that leaves me with one hero point after I spend <laughs> this one, but I'll do it. Yeah, I gotta say, they've made the difference for me. They I, have. I bumped them it's up. Like, handy. Yeah, and that is 11 damage. Okay, he's really not looking good. Then at the end of his turn, let me see, evoke fear. It repeats the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the condition early on a success. Uh, but I have rolled a five. So no. <laughs> yeah. He is still that, that DV of 18 is tough. But alas. It's tough. It's tough, especially for just a guy who's not a wizard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's that turn order. Wizard number three, so stu- the student will cast a spell he's gonna also try to fight he's actually gonna do a magic dart which is a weak spell that simply does not miss and he's going to fire it at the inquisitor mage who's right in front of him so that's five magic damage to a little blue dart in this guy's face then it's Galal's turn turn all right you've got the other mage right next to you the bad mage yeah i would like to i was um, close to the edge of that boat he sure is close to the edge of that boat. Yeah. Boy, I, would Windblast push him back? No. Windblast, uh, windblast is a prone spell. Knocks, not a knocks him spell. prone. Yeah. But push pull would knock him back because I would move him 15 feet. Yes. And I can move him 15 feet in any direction. I, mean, I suppose if I was going to push pull him, I could just bang him against the mast of the ship. But that's, <laughs> which actually kind of sounds fun. I am going to. You actually can push people into objects. It's just, it's not a lot of damage where you can do that. Yeah, no. With your 15 feet, does it have to be the full 15 feet or can you stop it short? Can you say uh, I'd up push to. him five up to. or up to? Okay. Yep, yeah. up to. Yeah, so I could push him into the water. That's no problem, but I don't want him to get away. I'm just going to use cold snap, okay. but I am going to empower it by two points. All right. That's a vitality um, save for me. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely a fail. That's a uh, six. All right. So that'll be 3d8 worth of damage. Gone. So that's 13 points of cold damage. Big uh, ouch. Big chili. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I'll see if I get my points back. Do I get the points for empowering it back? That's a destruction spell. It is a destruction spell. You're absolutely right. So I don't so think no. it doesn't matter. Yes. Uh, all right. Cool. And then... You've got movement if you want it. Um, I do have movement, and I'm going to... Sus- although it's a little tight here. You go diagonally. But- yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can't run through the people, can I? Yeah. Okay. If I flee, anyway, I'm going to incur the attack of opportunity. So I might as well... Let me just count it out first. You said the first diagonal is free? Yeah. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, uh, that doesn't actually get me very much you could use your actions or so you could sprint yeah i could go there but i don't yeah mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not jumping off the boat like that's not and get my clothes dirty that's and you're also wearing that's, armor so. i'm also wearing armor exactly yeah that doesn't do me very much so i'm not gonna worry about okay it. yeah i'm not gonna i'm just gonna stay well then it's the last guard who hasn't gone who's going to jump up onto the boat and attempt to attack zorn okay so the first one is a hit with a dirty 20 with the spear for eight piercing. It's actually a pretty good hit. Ouch. And then the last friendly mage, mage number two, the last of the students, will do magic. He's going to go with just another magic dart. He's just going to do damage directly to the one who just attacked you, the one who just ran up onto the dock and stabbed the guy who's been trying to save him. I don't roll a d20 for magic dart. It just hit. Okay, just if three damage. Not much, but to guard number five. Well, Looping... I was going to say, I spoke on my reaction, and I meant to speak during my turn, but I would want to say to it's uh, fine. yell out to the mages, stay and fight with us. Rise up like the mountain from the prairie and show <laughs> them your strength. Two, two of them already seem relatively on board with that, but hey, tides can turn. And one of them, you definitely needs the pep talk. Why don't you roll a persuasion for me? Sure. Talking's a free action, so whatever. It's going to be a 14. Pretty good, pretty good. We'll see if he takes to that when his turn comes around. Who should go now, actually, is the Inquisitor Mage. Look at that. You guys are in a relatively cone shape. Let's yeah. see here. Yeah. Uh, it has to be 15 feet. Okay. Inquisitor Mage is a jerk. So he's going to cast Holy Light in a cone. It's going to catch his guardsmen in the cone. He doesn't care. So it's this flash of blinding yellow radiance. Let me double check. Holy light. He's applied the cone modification to it, so it hits you guys. I need magic saving throws from Josh and Glenn, as well as from some of my NPCs here, two of these student wizards and the guardsmen. Six. That's a modified 20. Okay, so you're good. We'll take half. One of the wizards will take half. One of the wizards and the guardsmen will take full. It's not very much if he doesn't empower it. It's just a D8 of holy damage. So that's five holy damage if round, you're taking the full. So two if you're taking half. Zorn isn't looking great, but he's still on his feet. Speaking of of which, it's your turn. Okay. So Zorn is going to pivot around this guy to here. Sure. Yep. I'm going to use my first quick action for the shove action, which I'm flavoring as this is Sparta kicking the bastard over the rail. Valid. That's an athletics contest. Correct. Athletics is plus 10. Let's see how we do. Jeez. Pretty good. Uh, but I only have a 13 because I rolled poorly. Hang on. Stats for a guard. Believe it or not, that's a tie because I only have a three, but I rolled a natural 20. <laughs> Tiebreaker, roll with luck for eight for me. Wait, how is that a tie? Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, that's a clear defender. Yeah, so it, yeah. it just it doesn't get pushed. Never mind. Yeah. Thank you. You had a 23, Glenn had a 13. Right. Oh, I thought he said, thought he said plus 13. Never mind. Okay. Uh, (laughs) It's late. It's late. (laughs) No, no. I I have a total of 13. I rolled a three and I only have plus 10. You got to kick him. He braces it on his shield. That's just one quick action. What else would you like to do? Can technically just try again. Looking slightly annoyed, (laughs) Zorn kicks him again. (laughs) I've not rolled as good that time. 21. Yeah, seven. Splash down. You spar to kick him, he tumbles backwards over the railing, it hits him in the back, and he flips. And he is in the water with chainmail on. So probably just gonna call him out. Yeah. Um <laughs> Zorn calls after him, hope you can get that armor off fast. As he steps forward to re-engage the captain. But he has no right. Yeah. So where are we? That was Zorn. Then it is Wizard number one who's backed into the corner and grabbed. But I don't think that prevents him from doing anything with his spells. 
As long as his hands are free, yeah. Yeah. He's got one hand free, at least, even if yep. the other guy's got him by the arm. And on the wizard stat block here, he sure does know Arcane Beam. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a nice, easy diagonal hit on... Yep the captain and one of the guardsmen. So that's magic saving throws, which they both fail. Arcane beam's a good one. It's a good one. Simple, but effective. That is 4d10 plus 5 for 15. Not super high, but hey, 15 to 2 targets. So They yeah, gave a good showing for themselves. That's the captain, dusted. And that's that guard in a really bad mood. So yeah, he lets it out. He does not zip it around carefully. It just goes right through these guys, and it is a bad time. Then it would be a dead guy, so it won't be a dead guy. So it'll be Obinar's turn. All right, so Obinar is not liking what he is seeing from various folks. We're down to just one guardsman and the mage. Obinar is focused on the mage. Hang on one second. Obinar is going to move to this position. He is going to throw his spear uh, at the mage at the head of the boat. Yeah. At the mage, but he is going to aim and take a headshot. Okay. With his first action. Using uh, your sharpshooter to not have disadvantage. Correct. And because he's got aim that allows him to utilize poke. I believe. So yeah, let's see if let's see if you hit first. That would be a uh, pretty epic. <laughs> That is going to be a 26 to hit this fool uh -huh. in the head. So, yeah, you do your damage. On a headshot, you add an extra 2d6. Yep, so I am... And then with poke, I believe you add an additional d6. Yeah, yeah. so you're adding a, an additional 3d6 to the, the 1d6 that it already is. So, 4d6 plus strength. Yep, okay, so that's 15... Plus my strength, which is three, so 18, as he catches a spear in the head for 18. Hey, he had 18 health, <laughs> so oh, yeah. No, we weren't supposed to kill him. <laughs> oh, I actually was going to absolutely kill him, because now that I don't have my spear in my hand, I'm going to draw and fire my bow at three. All right, yeah, so you just you chuck your spear at this guy. It today. goes right through his neck. <laughs> <laughs> and he is down for all counts for forever. Gil all kind of go. <gasps> and this is my second attack, so this would be at disadvantage. Yeah, yeah. There's one guardsman left firing a bow. And eleven and eight is nineteen to hit with the bow. I am also aiming mm. at his neck. You can't aim if you already oh, have you disadvantage. Oh, okay, that's right. And I you can attack that. Yeah. All right. And that's so just the D8 in strength. Six points of damage to that one. Probably Unfortunate. He's at one HP. He It's actually his turn next. So he yeah. collapses and surrenders with a big gash across his ear as this arrow whizzes behind him and cuts him. And then he drops his spear. He releases the mage that he was grabbing onto and lays down with his hands out. And the, the floor is yours. Yeah. Open our. Uh, open our. Join us on the boat, please. Smart oh, yeah. thing. You did all die. Uh, he, walks he says over. to number three. He walks over to him and picks him up, and he says, "I don't know if you were the one who who hit uh, a surrendered foe, but would you like me to do that to you now?" No need to roll intimidation. He says, uh, "Please, sir, mercy. I'm just following orders." And should I show you the same mercy you showed them? You tricked them. We were looking for the bamboozler. You're. <laughs> one of the bamboozlers. That's actually pretty accurate. We did not expect them to be the bamboozlers, did we? I'm going to start sliding the gangplank onto the boat because Galal realizes in a way that perhaps Zorn and Obinar that we're now fugitives and need to Correct. GTFO. You did so, do a crime. Yeah, oh, we, yeah. I'm we well just, aware of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, can't, you, you can't talk you about this? On a boat. I... I Cannot Open. talk my way out of this. So I am sliding the gangplank onto the boat, and if need be, we'll use control weather to stir up a wind so that we can start getting the GTF put out here. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you want. That would absolutely guarantee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A favorable yeah, yeah. wind. Yeah. Ovenar yeah. extends a hand to the other mate to the maid that asked for our help. You asked for help. Help was granted. 
you will join us now, correct? I owe you my life. Where, wherever you sail, so oh, be yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Galal was not giving any of them the option. Like, they're all, them and the guard are coming with us. So we'll sort it out when we're in international waters. But <laughs> Gal- Galal yeah. is just like, well, uh, sailing, my sailing. Life. Sailing. Right. Uh, Zorn shrugs, starts cleaning his swords off on uh, a dead guy's cloak. And he's like, glad I grabbed my backpack before we left then. Hmm. Always exciting with you two. I was never a fan of oppression anyway. <laughs> And that's the real lesson. <laughs> the real adventure was the friends you met along the way. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> the real adventure was the tyranny we cut in half along the way. Yeah, uh, right? yeah. I always hated the way you guys do magic. You humans. Yes. We'll, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> right. <laughs> Blow harder. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that was a tremendous amount of fun, Alex. That's uh, yeah. You ride off into the sunset yeah, and, as we're and sailing yeah, away, off to new the... kinds of adventures. Yes. Yeah. See, exactly. Yeah. As we're sailing off into the sunset, you hear the crunch of the last piece of road bacon. Do you think we'll <laughs> oh. this where we're going? <gasps> oh no! <laughs> so, as he speaks about it before he takes the bite, because he stopped to trash talk first. Zorn wants. A re- a, to use his reaction to try to snatch it out of his hands and stuff it in his mouth instead. Roll fine motor for a quick little. Don't make me retribute on you. <laughs> <laughs> that's not an attack. That you know, have to take I damage. I know. Uh, that's a so great way to do that spell, though. That way it prevents 15? things like that. Sorry, what team? 15? 15? Yeah, good enough. Yeah, you have yoinked the bacon. Pretty good, <laughs> eh? Thanks for saving me some. You guys aren't blowing. And then you jump and freeze in the air. And then the crowd. Oh, you roll. blow hot enough for all of us. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's that. That's the adventure. Me. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so if Thanks I. Thanks for, for playing. Just, what do we ju- think? Yeah. Yeah. For just a minute. Uh, first of all, thank you for running the adventure. This was a whole lot of fun. Absolutely. I had a great time. Oh. Going through it. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate I it. I love what? the combat mechanics. I the love the combat mechanics. Work. The combat I, mechanics were amazing. Yeah. The, awesome. Uh, uh, the interaction of the spell, now that I've played a little bit, I would probably have put more magic so I had a little bit more that I can do. More on the known yeah. spell list. I had enough points to do the types of things I wanted to do, but yeah, I would definitely play this character with a little bit more magic now that yeah. I have a good idea of how things interact. I just, oh, wow, so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, and one of the things that they say about like D and Pathfinder Two a lot is that you have the illusion of choice, right? That you don't mm-hmm. actually have any real changes that have real impact turn to turn, right? You for maximum efficiency, you should be doing pretty much the same thing all the time. And Zorn, I feel like you were doing the same thing all the time, but that was very much that's what your character was. You go, you were min max right? the dual wielder, yeah, yeah. But I loved it too because when we got to the second fight, where we were more at range instead of just starting yeah. off on the monster's face, yeah, I got to play with the action economy, which is what I designed those spears and throwing axes around. Yeah, that was a really was, clever build. I like that, which was to use one in each hand, not the long sword, so yeah. that you could throw that one and either draw another thrown weapon, yep, or yeah. if it was time to fully close to melee, draw both swords. So that one time where he got to turn around. Chuck the spear into the guy, draw his sword as he was moving <laughs> forward, and still make two long swords attack, long yeah. sword attacks. That was sexy. Yeah. I really yeah, enjoyed yeah. the action. Yeah, I can see somebody doing like a, a double spear sense. build or just like a full throwing dagger build, yeah, similar. Just, well, as a just thrower throwing feet spears all get, the place. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. With what I attempted to do, and I didn't get off the second attack, but being able to throw the spear, run up, grab the spear, and then stab sure, yeah. with the spear. Yeah, it's a free action to, to pick up a weapon. So yeah, yeah, I thought that was cool. Um, that was very then, cool, Leonica. Absolutely. Yeah, then, that was a sick and move. Then, and then on the dock, where I threw the spear because it was in my hand, so I throw. I so your hands are empty, so you can draw your my bow for free. Empty, so now yeah. I draw the bow, and it was again. It was like I'm getting two attacks, and the first one was designed to put the huge. maximum hurt. Yeah. Yeah. So it's aim, then do that. Knowing that you can only aim once is important, but it's not a detriment. It doesn't change what I do. Depending on what weapon I'm doing, I might change. Yeah which attack I aim on. You might aim for a leg if you're trying to capture someone alive. You could yeah. also, at some point, take quick attacker, at which point you will no longer have disadvantage on that second yeah. attack. Yeah, I expect yeah. a lot of people will take quick attacker, but that's fine. Yeah. It was a toss-up yeah. for me for a while between it and Slicer and another one. 
Yeah, I expect there to be a handful of features that are like are common picks because yeah. they're just universal. Yeah. But I well, think it's I think it's like finally blood it's overpowered. Magic. Blood, mag blood magic is so good. It's because you don't have to use also the best uh, name. It's the best name, right? For one, but for also it's like the two abilities that it has. So the ability to go ahead and change hit points into magic points is mm -hmm. cool. And I probably would have used it more if I didn't take 13 points of damage in one attack in that middle. Combat. Yeah. But like uh, the ability to go ahead and manipulate the short rest mechanic, because it's only 30 minutes, which makes it really yeah. handy. To just it's 30 minutes, but we didn't run up into this issue, but you're capped at three per long rest. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I was burning through them too. It's take one after every encounter and kind of regain as many spell yeah. points as I can. That's really helpful. But every round I was like, man, I've got some really great, spell options here like i was getting ready to go ahead and throw a fire bottle at the guys that were up at the top part of the boat there i was like was that gonna burn the boat down That's, yeah that might have been a problem but, but yeah you know but whatever <laughs> and, that's fine it, it's, it's the, what happens as a player as soon as they said help me i'm like we're about to be fugitives i knew it in that yeah. moment right oh, yeah. yeah so it was like okay which made me feel so much better as a player by the way obviously you write an adventure so it can go whatever way the players take yeah it. i had a I had an alternate set of encounters for if you had sided with the mages right at the beginning and yeah. you had to sneak to the docks i had a, a yeah. different yeah. set of enemies but, but yeah i mean uh, let's be honest here we uh, might have if we didn't have the snitch mage mr loyalist yeah yeah, yeah. 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 and and <laughs> Which well, is a fun dynamic. It's fun to have a character have an arc in a one shot. You don't know. Yeah. That was cool. That was, yeah. that was a really cool way to play him, Josh. But as soon as we are away from the dock and he feels reasonably confident that they're not being chased, those three mages are being interrogated to figure out what the heck actually happened and what was really <laughs> about. Are they? Are right? you actually like, necromancers? Or like, not are yet? they actually? I'm placing the over under on the number of them that get bound and thrown over the side at one and a half let's just put so it i think i think the mage we killed was the necromancer i think he made i think he was too. to blame yeah. yeah to blame them yeah i think so. e either that or just a corrupt inquisitor who was trying to go ahead and raise his own cachet by basically picking on Ackles. oh scott glenn there in the firefighter movie there where basically yes. he's starting his own trouble so he can be the hero kind of exactly thing. Yep. back backdraft backdraft yeah so Either way, like as, as a fellow person in the system, do I wish that we had brought him alive so he could answer questioning? Yes. Does the fact that he is dead are, are like harm me? No. And but you no, know, but now and he died in a super now sick way. So. <laughs> yeah. that is true. Yeah, he got a spirit. <laughs> he to took the a neck. spirit of the neck. <laughs> <laughs> that was enough. Yeah, that was he's a ton like, of fun. He's, yeah. he's like that guy from Ghost with a big arrow. And again, to go back to some of the mechanics that just had to do with the various species, the stoneborn resistance was so key. While you guys were taking these huge hits, yeah, the piercing because yeah. I built a range person, I wasn't getting hit often, but it really allowed me to leverage that re retribution spell i'm like as long as i can get this reaction out i might as well move i basically took movement because that was a third attack for me <laughs> is how i managed it because i was taking yeah, yeah. if you're fighting hits. enemies you're resistant to anyway you're like oh i'm only gonna take yeah. two damage yeah right. exactly it's, it's so like you, you you the the... Armor on with the ice monster yeah, yeah yep. you bait the opportunity attack just to retribute them yeah i noticed that, that exactly really cool. Yeah, and and I thought it, it fit the kind of vibe I was looking for. I wanted this character who, like, again, against type, while the yeah. character was built on a ranger-ish frame. Right, I love that, is, that you guys didn't make characters that, like, fit in any of those boxes. Like, we had a wizard, a ranger, and a fighter, but sure. not really. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You all had something different about you. Yep, in that, I was really good at targeting and the range bit, yes, but we weren't doing a lot of things. I didn't have a whole lot of nature stuff, or and we weren't adventure, specifically. Yeah hunting but for me it was more making that gish who was very focused on a specific line which is a very defensive character who could be very offensive and really ride that middle ground between the two extremes of our party i thought worked really well yeah awesome all right uh so we will be back next week where the three of us will do our in-depth review of the system after our gameplay here looking forward to that we'll be recording that in a little bit here compile our notes a little bit and then that'll come out on the channel uh, the week after this wraps up here alex thanks again uh, for coming on the show and showing us big adventure game it's really been a really fun time it's been great seeing you again yeah it was, yeah, it was a heck of a big adventure <laughs> i i really in, enjoyed this game i just had it so much fun Thank you uh, very yeah. much. And if I can just say one more time again, anyone looking to play, it is free right now while it is in a beta test. So spellbookgaming.com, go play it. That's our show for tonight. And like I said, we'll be back next week with the our review of the system. So until then, thanks for everyone for listening right. and uh, go check it out. Big Good adventure game. Good night, all.
Thank you for joining us. This has been Tabletop Journeys. We would love to hear your feedback on our show today. Join us at www.ttjourneys.com where you can subscribe to the blog to leave comments and see all the content that we publish beyond the podcast. You can also stay in touch by subscribing to our Twitter, Tumblr, or Instagram at TT Journeys. Joining our Facebook group, Tabletop Journeys. Or by sending an email directly to podcast at ttjourneys.com. Our full episodes come out every week on Friday. And every Tuesday features actual play and gameplay showcase episodes. Looking for early access? You can support the show and get episodes before everyone else at www.patreon.com forward slash TT Journeys. Check it out today and see all the awesome benefits we bring to our supporters. Lastly, if you're listening to us on Stitcher, iTunes, Podchaser, Spotify, or Audible, you would really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to the podcast on that platform. Thank you for listening and for being a part of our growing community. And we bid you fair tides, friends, for Legends Await.